Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the pulmonology and the topic is lung function tests or spirometry and the interpretation of it. So, let us start. First of all, let us look at this diagram over here and guys, I make these diagrams already in the board so that I do not waste your time. That is all. So, what we have over here is the normal volume loops or sorry, not loops volume changes and capacities in the lungs. So, what we, uh, we have here is, look this is our tidal volume, tidal volume, we have done the volumes before, it is about half a liter of volume which is part of the quiet breathing. So, quiet inhalation or quiet exhalation moves about half liter of air in or out. So, that is this inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration. This red line here is very, very important. Why is this important? This line indicates functional, functional residual capacity or FRC and we have done this in detail separately. So, I do not want to repeat it. The importance of that from the lung function tests is this, FRC tells us about a volume, lung volume, where the chest outward movement, chest walls outward movement and lungs inward movement are balanced with each other. So, let me ex exhibit what that means. If I now stop speaking, I have my glottis open my airway is in contact with the environment and I am at equilibrium, then that volume that is left in my chest, in my lungs will be called functional residual capacity. So, let, let me, so my, my glottis was open and I was at, at equilibrium with the environment and my outward uh, springiness of the chest wall was balanced by inward movement of the lungs. Now, another important volume is the residual volume, the, the volume that can really not be measured. This is that volume that whatever you do is going to stay inside the lungs. So, if I do and keep exhaling, still there is going to be about 1.2 liter of the volume that stays in the lung. Now, we also know that this is inspiration. So, this side upwards is inspiration. So, when we are inspiring, when we are inhaling, we are increasing the volume inside the lung. This is important that upwards is inspiration because we will use the same concept in these graphs as well downwards is exhalation, <sighs> expiration. This is of course, inspiratory reserve volume. That is that if I take a normal breath in quiet and then continue to inspire further, <sighs> forceful inspiration. So, then I reach here and then as I start exhaling, if I keep going, then this whole slope which I will make in blue here. This whole slope, which has the inspiratory reserve volume, then the tidal volume, then the expiratory reserve volume, this whole slope is called vital capacity. In our today's discussion, this vital capacity is what is really important. We will be talking about this vital capacity all along the lecture and the changes to this vital capacity in various lung pathologies. This is it. So, we are talking about this, forget about everything else. Now, if this is the vital capacity, the volumes that we should know and capacities, residual volume, keep an eye on this one, the functional residual capacity, FRIs, FRC, keep an eye on that vital capacity itself and finally, total lung capacity TLC. 
So keep an eye on these and we'll talk about what happens as we do spirometry on patients. All right, so now let's come here. I'll erase this in a second. Here is a, here are two charts for spirometry. The two charts are following. This one is simply the time and volume graph. What this means is this. You ask the patient to take a forceful inhale, to do a forceful inspiration and then do a forceful expiration. Now, if you come back for a second over here, remember the vital capacity is from the full breath in to the full breath out. However, if you ask the patient to do this in a forceful way, if you ask the patient to do it rapidly, then this, F, this VC is called FVC, forced vital capacity. Forced vital capacity, so this is the vital capacity. Inspiration done, and now I'm going to exhale. This is vital capacity. But if I do this full inspiration, then this is the forced vital capacity. So today's discussion is about forced vital capacity, time-based vital capacity, forceful vital capacity. So keep that eye. So time volume graph. So what happens is when you ask the patient to exhale after a full breath, the patient would start exhaling and how much does it go? Of course, if you see here, he has come here and I think this is about 6 liter of the total capacity of the lungs. He is here and then he is going to start exhaling. Within the first second, this is important, keep an eye on this. Within the first second, normally the patient would exhale about 4.8. So here is the first second and then as the time keeps going slowly the patient keeps or person keeps exhaling more. So what this graph tells you is look at this inspiration first second so a lot of the air has been expelled in the first second and then in the rest of the second you keep going but you cannot expel this much you would just gradually keep expelling up to up to I believe 6 liter in healthy people men 6 liter so this is called this is the flow and the volume with the time now down here we are going to do volume flow volume flow volume loop what is the difference in this and this? Look, this is a quantitative graph. What does that mean? It tells us the quantities of volume over time, right? This is a qualitative and quantitative graph. What does that mean? This graph tells us, so this has to be understood. This graph, flow volume loop, tells us at a certain volume of the lungs how much flow is occurring and why is that interesting it is interesting because in various diseases at various volumes flow becomes changed and detecting that change allows you to figure out if it is a restrictive disease for example or obstructive disease or if there is an obstruction outside of the lung in the airway and stuff like that if there is a tumor in the trachea and so on so how do we plot this one so look this one here first second so take a deep breath first second right this first second here so we start from some point in the flow volume loop let's first do the inspiration so here in this loop inspiration is downwards here we had the inspiration upwards here downward movement of the graph shows inspiration. Inspiration, look at this. Do this right now when if you're watching it. Do an, a deep inhalation and you would see that the inhalation makes a graph or makes a maneuver which is like this. So there is sort of a uniform increase in flow of the 
air going in and the volume expansion of the lungs and then as the volume keeps expanding and reaches its maximum further flow starts reducing. So, now the chest is at its maximum volume, but the flow has reduced. So, again look my volume would continue increasing. So, flow slowly starts increasing inward flow and then at the end of the inspiration it slowly stops increasing right. So, it re reduces. So, that is this. Now, when you do exhalation that is very interesting. <gasps> exhalation is different for in from inhalation. Inhalation is gradual. Exhalation the very first second if this is time here, very first second we exhale a lot. That means very first second the air uh, the flow while the volume is still big flow is a lot. So, that is shown here like this peak and then a linear reduction in flow as the volume keeps reducing. So, this is the volume increase and decrease. So, this way volume is increasing chest volume or lung volume this way volume is reducing this way flow is increasing and this way flow is reducing. So, flow increases on the exhalation a lot within the first second that is why. So, take away of this take away is in the first second of the forced expiration a majority of the air is expelled. We expect about 80 to 85 percent or more of the air to be expelled out in the first second. Keep this one thing in mind. So, now what is the use of this? We have the same information here as well. Look the use of this is that in certain cases in certain pathologies the quality of this not the quantity the quality of this graph would change the shape will change you can look at the shape and say there is a problem. Looking at this graph and looking at the shape of that graph, graph and then saying there is a problem is more difficult and doing that here is easier that is all that is why this is useful. So, now let us start to talk about what are the various other diseases what are the diseases that would cause changes to the graphs. In this particular case I want you to draw with me. So, look I am going to make this graph here. So, this is time and this is liters of air air in liters and let us go up to 6 liter let us say this is what is happening. Now, the patient comes to you you ask the patient to take a deep breath and then blow in this spirometer <sighs> like this and what patient does is patient does this this is what you see and this is 1 second and 2 and then so on. Can you see the slope of this and this? So, in the first 1 second how much air <laughs> this has become too, too slanting let us make it little better. So, here so in the first 1 second as you can see the air expelled is much less than the air expelled in the first second here. However, overall in the 6 seconds time frame or 10 seconds or whatever seconds you have decided in that time frame still the overall expulsion the volume that is exhaled is the same. So, what is what does this mean? This means patient exhaled slowly. So, patient did exhale the whole volume, but the the flow was slower. There can be two reasons for that one is patient is deliberately doing it which I hope patient is not going to try to do that. Second is that it may be a disease with the patient. Now, I want to put one more concept in front of you and that is called dynamic compression. What is dynamic compression? Look we should expect that when we are forcefully exhaling please pay attention to this one point dynamic compression. When we are exhaling then the pressure of the air should open up the airways and kind of air should exit fast. <gasps> However, what happens is that as we forcefully exhale 
we compress the chest and that causes compression of the airways as well. Not here, but here and in the, all the airways inside the lung. When they get compressed, their diameter becomes stuck and constant and it cannot, they cannot be dilated by the air moving through them. This is called dynamic compression because of the expiration. That causes the pipe to become constant in diameter. That means the air moves out with a constant pace. So whatever patient does, he cannot increase the volume of air expelled because the airway is constant. This is called dynamic compression. And that dynamic compression creates a, a constant pace. Now in this patient, the amount expelled is less. Now remember this, the first second um, volume expelled is called FEV1 forced expiratory volume in the first second. The total volume expelled is called FVC, forced vital capacity. They both are actually part of the same. The whole vital, whole expulsion is 6 liter, let's say. Out of that, 4 liter came, came out in the very first second. So that 4 liter is called the FEV1. The whole is called 6. Their ratio FEV1, FEV1 over FVC is really, really important and I've discussed it in a separate lecture. Normal ratio is about 80% or more of the air is expelled in the first second. So the, if you have the USMLE question and if the answer is 0 0.8, that is 80%. And that 80% or more is normal. Anything lesser than 70% will be a, a obstructive disease that we'll be talking about over here. So here, let's say this patient is expelling out about 3 liters. And his total expulsion is still, let's say, 6 liter. So now FEV1 is what? 3 liter. So 3 liter divided by 6 liter equals 0 0.5 equals 50%. So out of the whole 6 liter of air pushed out by the patient, only 3 liter or 50% could be pushed out in one second. That is because there is obstruction to the movement of the air out. This obstruction is in addition to the original dynamic compression. There was dynamic compression that happens to all of us. In addition to that, now there is further compression. For example, patient has emphysema. For example, patient has asthma or has other um, obstructive diseases. The result of all of that is that this ratio has become reduced. How about the volume? Normally, the patient's volume increases. Emphysema, dilated lungs, big lungs. So volume normally increases. So if I make patients graph that I made before. This is tidal volume. Normally what happens is residual volume and the forced, res forced residual volume FRC increase in this patient. This patient's lungs expand. They have more volume in them. Patient is now working with a higher volume. So what we say is that the FRC is increased in such patients. Of course, that means residual volume is increased as well. Lungs are just dilated. And on top of that, patient is not able to expel a lot of air out because of obstruction to the airway. And so FEV1 by FVC ratio is reduced. Now let's plot this patient in this one. Can you just look at the the volume loop and say this patient has an obstructive disease. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to plot this again here. So let's say you're in the, in the uh, respiratory unit. They show you this chart and the chart looks like this. Patient is there and patient inhaled and inhalation looked like this. So good, normal inhalation. So let's say this was, let's say this is normal patient's inhalation was, let's increase the volume a little bit. So patient's volumes are increased. Now what should be the normal ex expiration? This and this, a linear line and majority here. Instead of this, the patient is showing something like this. 
actually not like that like this so what's happening is this is called coving coving there is obstruction to the expulsion so there is a slow ramp towards the movement of the air out this coving you can look at that and say oh man this patient may have obstructive disease that is what we mean by qualitative graph as compared to quantitative graph this graph will give you quantities you have to do your math this graph would give you a shape and you can look at the shape and say oh may man this guy may have obstructive disease okay let's continue how about restrictive disease so this is obstructive restrictive let me draw that now this patient has a problem maybe he has kyphoscoliosis his chest structure is not correct or maybe the patient has interstitial disease so at the end of the day there is restriction of the air to come the the sorry not the restriction of the air but the lung tissue is restricted it is more elastic it is scarred it is damaged and it is it can recoil fast it cannot expand it's less compliant so in such patient whose lung volume has reduced and lung is elastic when you ask this patient to in inhale and then forcefully exhale so let's go back this is 6 liters first inhalation the lungs have become smaller because of restriction and scarring so he can't do a 4 or 5 liter inhalation normally 4.2 liters he would probably take in about 3 liters that's it even if he wants to have more because the lungs are shrunken now when he exhales there are two factors to remember one because of the interstitial disease and i've done the disease in lots of de detail separately so i don't want to waste your time drawing that here what happens in the interstitial disease is scarring causes increased traction on the airways and airways open up so airways are dilated so it is easy for the air to move out and the lungs are elastic they want to compress they want to go down they are less compliant they want to shrink so when patient is expelling the air what do you think will the patient be able to quickly expel the air yes airways are dilated and lungs want to shrink so in the very first second what will happen first second patient would expel almost the same as normal will the volume the same as normal for example 4 liters no volume will not be the same the volumes are reduced all volumes are reduced so now can the patient continue expelling yes will it go to 6 no he'll be probably restricted to 4 liters 5 liters why because the lungs are shrunken because of the interstitial scarring and inflammation okay so this patient fev1 what do you think is increased yes so this patient fev1 is either increased or normal how about fvc what is the total volume reduced or normal depending upon the severity so fev1 over fvc if fvc is reduced which normally it happens that it reduces more than fev1 the ratio will become greater than 80% here the ratio was lesser than that is the definition ratio lesser than 70 here ratio is equal to normal or greater than normal that so if you have somebody who has fev1 equal and greater than normal would you say that the person is normal no you have to look at the fvc because if the fvc is lower then the patient may have restrictive disease okay so what kind of a graph so now if, let's say this graph might not help you because fvv1 over fvc ratio is normal or greater than normal and you can say yeah this patient is fine however if i presented you the the loop the loop the qualitative graph what will happen in this patient number 1 all volumes are reduced so patient so if this is the normal chart normal graph this patient's graph is going to be starting from here so volume is reduced 
inhalation is similar as normal but smaller volume smaller flow how about the exhalation the very first second there will be a lot of flow the very first second the flow will be a lot how about the flow after that of course after that the flow will be almost like normal so the whole system has smaller lung volumes here if you saw i'm going to exaggerate the graph a little bit if you see straight lines and narrower narrower graph you can look at it and say man this person looks like he may have a restrictive disease so this is the quality of the res restrictive disease now let's go to extra pulmonary obstructions some more graphs that for usmle are not that important but people who are doing respiratory system they are doing rotations or they are working there at least they should be able to see it so couple of graphs loops first one is first is this one here so the expiration is normal however inhalation has a blunting here this is called blunt inhalation has become blunted why did that happen imagine that a patient has a vocal cord um, paralysis so when patient is trying to inhale the vocal cord falls inward and becomes an obstruction so now inhalation becomes constant and patient cannot increase the flow because of the obstruction but when patient exhales the vocal cord falls outward and opens up <gasps> and patient can exhale normally so this blunting can be because of the tumor or because of paralyzed vocal cord so you should know this one what else if you see a graph that looks like this so there is blunting so that means there is some sort of an obstruction while the patient is inhaling and this may be this however his expiration is like that as well it is blunted as well that means there is a constant resistance in the airway this is not pulmonary obstruction or pulmonary resistance this is airway this is extra pulmonary problem so this may be a tumor so in this tumor patient's peak for inspirations and expirations are not found because of that constant resistance in the airway then let's see one more graph during the inspiration you see that the inspiration is normal this is normal like this but expiration goes up like normal almost starts down as normal as well and then it becomes this way instead of a linear line what is happening there here this is called extra uh, pulmonary variable uh, obstruction so tracheo tracheo malacia is an example what is happening the trachea is floppy the trachea is weak the cartilage is are weak it is a genetic problem it can happen due to inflammation as well so the the cartilage is are weak and what happens is when you start expiring when the patient starts expiring or exhaling the pressure of the chest causes the trachea to become compressed so trachea starts okay but then it becomes compressed and becomes resistant to the flow and that resistance shows so finally this is done the lecture is done important thing here volume loop is a qualitative uh, loop sorry yeah qualitative loop this one is more of a quantitative loop you can look at it and not tell immediately what is going on until you do the math but you can look at this one and start saying well this lo looks like a tracheomalacia this may be a tumor this may be a paralyzed vocal cord or a tumor this could be a tumor as well uh, you can look at this and say well this looks like narrowed and straight lines and smaller volumes so this looks like a a this uh, restrictive lung disease this one has this coving in it so this looks like an obstructive lung disease and this is normal so this is the this is the use of these graphs thank you very much